Today, we will be learning about a very deep relation between geometry and algebra. On, the, on one hand, we have complex numbers from algebra. And on the other hand, we have inversive geometry. If you have not seen inversive geometry before, do not worry. We will discuss a little bit in this video. For a bit more expanded introduction, you can check the link in the description. We have another video on inversive geometry. And then we will connect the idea of inversion with the algebra of complex numbers. So to learn this entire thing and to know how to use it in problem solving, let's say in Math Olympiad or ISI or CMI entrances, stay till the end of the video. Also, there will be a question at the end of the video. You can try it and put a comment in the description. We are giving out Ramanujan scholarship for this month and we have not yet selected the candidate. So feel free to give a comment. Okay. Let's start with inversion. If you have seen it before, that's great. If not, here is a quick introduction to it. What is inversion? It's a function. Function means it will have input values or domain and output values or range, right? So both of them are points on the plane. Points on the plane. So points like 2 comma 3, 7 comma minus 9 and stuff like that, right? And output values are um, also points on the plane. Points on the plane. So it's a function that takes input points and gives output points, okay? Now let me tell you how this function actually works. How this function works works. What you do is you take a reference circle whose radius is suppose one centimeter. The radius could be different. It could be five as well. But for the moment we will keep it as one centimeter. And the center of the circle is O. This is the reference circle and sometimes known as the circle of inversion. Suppose you take a point here. Suppose this point P is your input point. point. You can think of this as the x-axis and you can join OP to write down the polar coordinates of P. That means the distance of P from the origin which is R and the angle that it makes with the x-axis, which is theta. So suppose P is R comma theta. What I want is, if I take P as the input point, I would want to tell you what is the output point if the function is inversion. And it's really simple. What you do is, you take another point here, somewhere here maybe, on the same line, on the same line OP, so Q is on the line OP and the length of OP times the length of OQ should be 1. So the length of OP times the length of OQ should be 1. Hence, we call it inversion. The lengths are reciprocal. The distance from the origin are reciprocals of each other. So this is, this has the polar coordinate of theta and 1 over r. Why? Because of course, the length of OP is r. So the length of OQ must be 1 over r. Only then the product will be 1. And the angle is theta because, of course, it is on the same straight line. Q is on the same straight line as P. That is by definition. That's how the function works. Now, let's connect this function with complex numbers. So, to do that, we have to first understand what are complex numbers. The way I think about complex numbers 
is like this. They are simply points on the plane with a special rule of multiplication. Special rule to multiply. Now, many of you have seen complex numbers as a plus ib forms where a and b are real numbers. Here, we will take a slightly different approach. We will take the polar coordinates. So, what is the polar coordinate? Well, you just have one axis, which is the, let's call it the x-axis, and the, a point called the origin. If you take any point P, then the polar coordinate is simply the length of OP, which is R, and the angle that it makes with the x-axis, that is theta. So if I tell you R comma theta, you will be able to write down A plus IB as well. A plus IB is simply the x and the y coordinates. So this is A and this is B. So you can always write it as A plus IB. Of course, you have to do a little bit of trigonometry. You can write A as R cos theta and B as R sine theta. That is the rule of conversion from polar to Cartesian coordinate system. The I is simply telling you that this number is the Y coordinate and this number is the X coordinate. That's all. The point is, we will describe this special rule of multiplication using polar coordinates. So how do we do that? Well, let's take R1 theta 1 as one of the points and R2 theta 2 as another point. R1 theta 1 as one of the points and R2 theta 2 as the other point. How do we make this multiplication of points? Well, we multiply lengths and we add angles. That's what we do. That's the special rule of multiplication. So multiply the lengths means you get R1 times R2, simple multiplication of two numbers, and add the angle, so theta1 plus theta2. So I'll speak, make a special note of this. If you multiply R1 theta1 with R2 theta2, this is called complex multiplication. If you do that, you are basically getting R1, R2, comma, theta1 plus theta2. I have discussed it in other videos that this operation also represents a very beautiful geometric function, a transformation. And what is it? It is rotation. You are adding angles, so you are rotating, right? You are adding angles theta1 to theta2. So you are basically rotating one of the points by another angle. And this is dilation. Dilation means you are extending or contracting the length by a factor of R2. I have discussed it in other videos. I'll put the link of the, in the description for those. Okay. Complex numbers have beautiful geometric significance. But let's not go too much into that right now. We just have this particular description of complex multiplication and we will use it to connect it with the notion of inversion. So let's finally go into that. Inversion and complex numbers. So what I'm going to do is, I will be describing the inverse image of a point, the inverse image of a point in terms of 
complex numbers. So suppose we have this complex number P, which is suppose Z equal to R1 or R comma theta. I want to find out the inverse image of P. The inverse image of P. So first of all, be very careful. The inverse of P is in terms of inversive geometry. It's not 1 over Z. Not that. Because what is 1 over Z? 1 over Z is a, another complex number which when you combine with Z gives you 1 comma 0. That's the definition of 1 over Z. If Z is R comma theta, 1 over Z is simply 1 over R comma minus theta. Z star 1 over Z is simply R times R times 1 over R comma theta minus theta. You multiply the lengths, you add the angles and you get 1 comma 0. So 1 over Z is simply here. It is 1 over R comma minus theta. So if this is theta, this is minus theta. And if this length is R, this length is 1 over R. Right? Okay. So we are almost done. We now need this length to be in this particular direction. Because the inverse image should be same as in the line of OP. That is how inversive geometry works. P goes to another point which is on the same line as OP. So what you have to do is, you have to reflect O1 over Z this much about X axis and it would come here. You reflect it. So what you do is, you take the conjugate of 1 over Z. Conjugate means you take the reflected image of it. So this is 1 over Z bar. So you now you are now here, which is 1 over Z bar. Point Z, 1 over Z comes here. And that is precisely the inverse image, inversive geometry is inverse, inverse image of the point P. So the point Z or P goes to 1 over p bar. This is the definition, the complex number definition of inversion. This is how inversion can be computed. So now let me give you an illustration. So suppose you have 2 plus 3i. What is the inverse of 2 plus 3i? Inversive geometry is inverse not the reciprocal. So it is 1 over 2 plus 3i bar. That is the conjugate of the reciprocal, right? So this is 1 over 2 minus 3i, right? And you can now take the 2 minus 3i times 2 plus 3i. You can take the conjugate of the denominator. So you have 2 plus 3i divided by 4 plus 9, which is 13. So 2 by 13 plus 3 by 13i. That is the inversive image of 2 plus 3i. And you can check that the distance of this one from the origin is square root of 9 plus 4, 13. And this one is square root of, so if you multiply these two lengths, you get square root of 13 times square root of 13 divided by square root of 169, which is 1. Distance is 1. And how can you show that the Point this particular point Q lies on the same line as OP. That is the challenge question. You can put a comment in the description. You can tell me how can you show that this point Q lies on the same line OP. Okay.
okay uh think about it and uh try some more beautiful problems i have put some more links in the description you can try them as well okay thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video